Charles Barkley, a phenomenon and a household name. You can check out King Charles with uh, Gail King. That's Wednesdays at 10 Eastern on uh, CNN. One hour talk show where he co-hosts and engages uh, with the guest conversations revolving around the most interesting stories of the week. Before we get to Charles, I'm watching last night. All of a sudden, Ernie introduces everybody, says hello to everybody, and it sounded like this. Hey, it's great to be here. It's uh, Can I do one more thing? Yes. One more? Uh-oh. Everybody join in. Barkley sucks. Barkley sucks. Barkley sucks. Say it. Barkley sucks. Say it. Say it. Say it. What? Charles, what? Brought about that with Shaq last night. Well, he does that all the time when we go in front of a live audience. You know, we only go in front of a live audience probably five times a year. So he does it every time. So it's a lot of fun. And, it, it, hey, anything we do to engage the crowd is pretty cool. It's called content. Whatever, whatever it is to entertain. And that's what you guys always do every night. But has Shaq crossed the line with you? No, hell no. <laughs> Have you crossed the line with Shaq? Uh, I don't think so. Dude, we're just entertaining people. I like Shaq a lot. We're good friends. Um, he's a great businessman. I learned some things from him. Uh, but, dude, we we are very happy together. And whatever he does, it's fine with me. I, I'm Dan, I've already cast a check. I don't care. <laughs> I've already cast a check. Uh, is your jersey retired in Philly? Yes. So Philly and Phoenix. Yes, sir. Okay. Why did Orlando take so long to retire Shaq's jersey? How do I know the answer to that question? Uh, Well, didn't you talk to Shaq and say, oh, wow, I thought your jersey was retired? No. Hell no. (laughs) Uh, No. I mean, uh, it was a good week for him down there getting that done uh, with the Magic, who's having a good year. Uh, But, yeah, uh, no, no, we don't talk about stuff like that, to be honest with you. I was talking about Caitlin Clark, the phenomenon, but this is really the Steph Curry effect when you think about it. That, you know, when Steph started taking those shots and Steve Kerr's holding his head like, what are you doing taking those shots? And then he realized that those are actually good shots. But the effect that that's had on basketball has been pretty remarkable. Well, it is. Uh, Caitlin, man, she's a phenomenon. It's, you know, I've actually, you know, it's really funny. I've been trying to get a chance to see her play in person, but I haven't been able to fit it into my schedule. I'm going to try to get that done in the next month or so. It's not easy, because if I do it, I'm probably going to have to get a private jet to fly the hour or somewhere <laughs> on the road, because uh, I want to see her play in person. Uh, number one, congratulations to her. Also, we can't forget about Lynette Woodard. Uh, you know, because there's a debate on all these records and things, but, you know, because uh, Lynette Woodard, I think, probably still has the record, uh, but she's not recognized. They didn't, they, they, that's how bad they treated women back in the day. They didn't even recognize their records. Uh, so shout out to Lynette Woodard, who was amazing. Uh, but Caitlin, man, what she's doing for women's basketball is pretty incredible. Now, you know, it's going to be interesting because. You know, the NCAA, they such damn boneheads. Um, they really are boneheads because, like, she can, she can stay in college another year. Yeah. You know, they've got to fix this system they got in place because, man, some of these guys have been in college so long, they could be doctors. <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I understand that we went through the COVID situation but, some, you know, I've seen some of these guys been in college for like six years. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, the, listen, they, the NCAA, they always screw everything up as usual because they've already – because let me tell you something. This NIL and the transfer portal, portal has really screwed up college sports, man. It is so bad, Dan, right now. And I don't know how we're going to fix it, but the first thing we could do is say, hey, guys, you can't stay in college long enough to be a doctor. That'd be the first thing we start fixing. Uh, you mentioned Lynette Woodard. She played at Kansas 1977 to uh, 1981. Also, I think she played for the Harlem Globetrotters. She did. And yeah. she's a, she was a great, great player, but she's an awesome person also. Uh, but like I say, a lot of these women, uh, there's, there's another woman, I can't remember her name, more. Uh, Pearl Moore, I think is her name, who got a bunch of records that we don't recognize also. She, Pearl's in the Hall of Fame. 
Uh, but man, that, that, how often do we treat women in sports back in the day? We didn't even count their records. That's crazy. Yeah, Pearl Moore played at uh, Francis Marion uh, back in the mid to late seventies and has the uh, all-time scoring record. We're talking to Charles Barkley inside the NBA and the uh, All Star break here. Did you bet on this? What did you bet on the Super Bowl? Who did you bet on? Oh, I bet on the Forty Nines. I got beat really bad. Uh, I had a beat down. You know what's crazy? Uh, number one, congratulations to Travis and Andy and Pat Mahomes and all those guys. I mean, man, you got to talk about Chris Jones. Chris Jones a monster, man. Yeah. Uh, but you know what's so crazy? And I bet against the Chiefs in all three games. Um, uh, uh, Buffalo, I, I, I was surprised that they, that they won at Buffalo. Then I was really surprised how they played, uh, how bad Baltimore played. And the Super Bowl was a good game. You know, and let me tell you something. All these idiot fools and jackasses out here, you know, oh, you know who I'm talking about on these other networks, Dan. <laughs> Why do we have to blame somebody? Kyle Shanahan has done a hell of a job, and we we get the luxury of seeing what happened after the fact. Uh, I thought Kyle Shanahan had a really good point because he said, you know, if you if from a lot, he says, well, if we had a score at first and they had a score at, then it would have been sudden death. And I was like, that's logical to me. But we got so many idiots, fools, and jackasses on television now. Everybody has to have a hot take and blame somebody. The 49ers had a very good year. And uh, listen, Pat Mahone just great. Plain and simple. Hey, let's, hey, listen. Let's stop the Tom Brady stuff already. Let's stop the Andy Reid, Bill Belichick stuff already. Patrick is on a great ascension. He's doing great. He's not Tom Brady yet. And Andy Reid, you know, is a great coach. And he's won three Super Bowl. He's still three behind Bill. And let me tell you how stupid some of these guys are on television. Uh, you know how much I hate Skip Bayless. I, I hate him with every fiber. You know, I really, sometimes he makes me want to gain weight back so I can hate him with even more weight. <laughs> You know, you know, he he goes on television and says, uh, if it wasn't for Bill, uh, if it wasn't for Tom Brady, Bill wouldn't have all these championships. And I'm like, well, <clears throat> Bill's a, the greatest coach ever. And he says, well, he only won the Super Bowls because of Tom Brady. Well, Andy Reid's a great coach. Exactly how many championships he won without Patrick Mahomes. Is that, the, count them, Dan. He was in Philadelphia all those years. He didn't win the Super Bowl. Why do you keep watching these shows if you hate Oh, I don't them? watch these shows. Trust me, I don't watch these shows. People send me these hot takes, and I love going hard at people because to sit there and say about Bill only won championship because of Tom Brady, that's stupid and asinine. And like I say, I like Andy Reid's a great person. He's a great coach. But, like, well, he, how many championships has he won without Pat Mahomes? That'd be absolutely zero. So stop trying to hate on Bill, Bill Belichick. Hey, give Andy his flowers. Give Patrick his flowers. The only thing, the only problem I have with the Kansas City Chiefs, honestly, Dan, why in the hell is Travis Kelsey always open? <laughs> well, don't blame that on on. Uh, hey, listen, tra <laughs> uh, hey, Travis. Uh, Travis is a friend of mine. He's a great, great player. He's in the conversation with Kellen Winslow and Gronk as the greatest tight end ever. But when I'm watching football, because you know I watch every football game because I bet on every football game, <laughs> I, all, all I'm saying to myself, yo, man, why is Travis Kelsey always open? It drives me crazy, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, going back to the coach and the star player, it's like Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson sharing that. Yeah, but for, for, for some reason, people want to take shots at Bill and it, it ain't right. When you get on television, you, our job is to be fair and objective. And we got some clowns on television <laughs> now who like Belichick is overrated. Dude went to nine Super Bowls. There's nobody went to nine Super Bowls who's overrated. And like I say, Tom Brady didn't play defense. He didn't play special teams. And you know what's really crazy? People are riding on um, Kyle Shanahan. At this stage of his career, his resume is probably better than Andy Reid's. Andy Reid only went to one Super Bowl in Philly. Kyle's been to two as a head coach. So at this stage of his career, his career is probably better ahead of schedule of Andy, Andy Reid. And he's been getting to the Super Bowl with 
good quarterbacks, not great quarterbacks, good quarterbacks. Who gets a, a, a ring first? Taylor Swift or Travis Kelsey with another Super Bowl ring? Well, I don't know anything about their relationship. I, I, you know, she's unbelievably talented, and uh, he's great. Do you think I mean, they he, get married before the Chiefs win another Super Bowl? Oh, I don't know that. I don't know that. I mean, they only been together a few months. But you and Madonna dated, so it's sort of like oh, Kelsey. We did not and- date. We did not date. We, we, she's a, a casual friend of mine. People tried to make it out more than it was. You know? Did you try to date Madonna? No, I did not. She, did she, she was a, try to date you? We just met, and people tried to run with it. Okay. Uh, she's a nice lady. Got nothing but good <laughs> things to say about her. Uh, but let me tell you something. I don't know anything. Because I, I, I tried to date her. She was very nice. Yeah. You know what's crazy? I have a very strict rule. I never ask people about their personal relationship because it's none of anybody's business, to be honest with you. So I haven't talked to uh, Travis about Taylor. I hope they're doing good. I mean, uh, you know, football, thank God football is over. So they can actually have some private time. <laughs> I, I, you know, they get a little a little private time now uh, because, you know, it's it's crazy trying to do it during the middle of the season, what they were trying to do. But now they can actually do get some private time. Yeah, yeah, they're in love, you know. Oh, uh, the commissioner talked about Vegas expansion franchise. Do we just assume that LeBron's going to be part of that ownership group in Vegas? Well, he probably has that type of money. You know, all these people be talking about ownership. You probably have to have $3 billion to even get in the conversation. You know, that expansion team, which, number one, I'm not big on expansion because the last thing we need to do is water down some of these mediocre teams we got in the NBA. I thought Vegas did a good job. You know, the, you know, traffic's always going to be bad in Vegas when you have a big event. But it's a it's got great hotels. It's got a lot of entertainment. I have no problem with sports franchises being in Vegas, you know, obviously, but I'm, you know, I'm me. I like to gamble. Uh, but I don't know about expansion. LeBron's going to own a team. LeBron's going to, it's going to be $5 billion at least. That's what I was told for that expansion. Well, it's probably going to be $5 billion. I mean, we just sold one for $4 billion. So it's going to be at least $5 billion. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, so yeah, I mean, LeBron's got he's got a lot of money, so maybe, um, yeah, I think he it, it'd be a great. We need first of all, we need um, uh, another black owner. You know, Michael's gone, and uh, I don't think we have a black owner in any sport. But you go have to start out with at least. I mean, I don't even think you can entertain it unless you got a couple billion dollars or more. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be five billion for that expansion team, and then I mean, so Dan, yeah, you all that money you got, yeah. you should put a team in Vegas. Yeah, I'm going to set my sights on an MLS team in Vegas first. You know that I'm going to start there, and then maybe I'll graduate to an NBA team. Well, listen, if you need a couple of dollars, call your bro, call your boy Chuck. I got you. Are you sure with that subway money you didn't blow it on San Francisco at the Super Bowl? Oh, you know, uh, hey, listen, I had a rough Super Bowl. I, I had I, I had a rough three weeks. Every week, every year I talk to you after the Super Bowl, and you say the same thing. You lost on the Super Bowl. Why don't you just bet against yourself? No, I, I won like six or seven oh, Super Bowls. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I won like what, six... back in the 70s? I mean, I don't No, remember. no, no. I was I was on a serious winning streak uh for a while. But I think I've lost the last four Super Bowls. Um, I think I've lost. I did. I, I won like six in a row, but I think I've lost the last four. You're the Buffalo Bills of Super Bowl betting. Which is one team that's never gotten to do <laughs> the justice they deserve, I might add. Okay, but they did lose. But, well, but they did get there four times. They never <laughs> – first of all, no team – you know, that, you know that's one thing that's always bothered me about that because, you know, Jim Kelly and Thurman and those guys and Bruce Smith – they probably never gotten the shine they deserve to True. have the True. to have the 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 with the, the, the I'm trying to think of the word I'm thinking of to have the the confidence the ability to get the four straight Super Bowls. It, first of all, no team has ever gotten there three years in a row. To get there four years in a row, 
those guys didn't win it, but they do deserve our accolades for like the intestinal fortitude that it takes to get beat down. First of all, the first one was close. The other three weren't. But to have the courage and the willpower to get to four years in a row, man, was incredible. You know what? If they do a remake of the remake of the movie Shaft, I think I got to consider you looking the way you look right now. Yeah, man, I'm not big on acting, man. It's it's just monotonous. Um, shout out to Richard Roundtree, who passed away the last <laughs> three months, man. I got a chance to meet him uh, a couple times in my life. It was an honor and a privilege. Uh, but we need another Shaft. Right on. Sam Jackson's played Shaft <laughs> the last few times. And uh, Sam is a, the best thing I've ever done working with Sam. Uh, and Spike and those guys, we just finished up. Actually, we just finished up all the Mars Madness commercials uh, for uh, for Capital One. So I'm excited about those. Be, but man, we need a new shaft. Be nice if you included me in the Capital One commercial. Maybe bring me in. Be kind of nice. Well, we got this year. We got Magic in again. Uh, we got Dion Warwick. Um, how about, I think those. How about me? I think. How about me? How about, Dan, I, I, Dan, I don't write. I don't write the script, man. You have to talk to Spike about that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah. we break it up a little bit. You know, bring me in. Dan, you know how much love and respect I got for you, man. We, man, we've been together. <laughs> we've been together probably forty years. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember I was there when you became a coward on the golf course and was scared to come to Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you used to come. Yeah. And then you turn into a coward and don't want to put your game on display. Why don't you come back to Tahoe? Um, well, now that you have regained your swing, now you want a piece. I get it. But when you were damaged, when you were at the side of the yeah, road. Yeah, but let me tell you something. And I didn't play you then because I didn't want to take your money. When you were, no, when first you of all, put up I, three I, digits. Your hey, score I, started with a one. I, hey, I, remember, I remember when you came to Tahoe. And you four put it from like six feet, and I and I knew I know and I know exactly what happened because normally when you're playing with your homeboys, they give you all those shots. That putts. is true. That is true. And I remember you four put it from yeah. like six feet. You're like, don't they give you these? I yeah. know they have to put them out. It was hilarious. Once again, when your score started with a one, I did not take advantage of you. Yeah, Dan. I appreciate that. You know, that. when Wilt, Wilt scored 100 and he held up that piece of paper, I mean, that's what you do after every score. It'd be like one, zero, and then a six. Yeah, and but see, every, everybody made fun of me for like 30 years. You know what? I can't find any of those guys. Because <laughs> I want all, every guy who made fun of me, now that I got my swing back, I want, dude, dude I want receipts. Oh, I know. Dude. I know. I know. I know. You look great. Have fun. Play nice there in uh, Indy. Uh, you know what? It's it's a great weekend for the NBA. Hey, Dan, number one, thank you for having me. Yep. And uh, tell the Danettes I said hello, and you guys have a great weekend. Thank you, Chuck. That's uh, Charles right. Charles Barkley. You can see him Wednesday night with Gail King, King Charles at 10 Eastern.